Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Ooh, pack one, pick one. This is definitely one of the better rares. Angel of Sanctions. 3-4, enters the battlefield, exiles the opponent's best card. And then also has Embalmed for 6 mana if they somehow get rid of it without exiling it. So that's going to be a pretty straightforward first pick. Pack overall is pretty strong, all the uncommons are great. Lay claim a little bit slow. This was definitely better when you could play it in Hour of Devastation as opposed to in the more aggressive formats. The Crasher, one of the better Exert creatures. And then Synchronized Strike, also great in the green Exert decks. And then we've got all the best commons here. Gustwalker, probably the best white common. Cartouche, probably the best blue common. And Magma Spray, definitely one of the better red commons. So, very powerful pack. Second pick. There is Hope Tender. Can maybe set up for kind of a green-white desert ramp deck. Green-white is probably the color pair that cares about deserts the most. Although I guess... There's some other colors that wouldn't mind the desert, like red has the Sand Strangler, blue has the Thirst that cares about desert, so... Most colors have a few desert payoffs. But if we can make a nice green-white kind of ramp deck, that could be pretty strong. Yeah, like the next best card is probably Magma Spray. Red-white tends to be a bit more aggressive. I think I'm taking the Thunder here. And see if we can draft a slightly more rampy deck. Ooh, Sifterworm. So, Trial of Solidarity is one of the best uncommons in the set if you draft an aggressive deck. But I kind of want to try the ramp deck, and Sifterworm is a nice payoff, as it can stabilize you by gaining life right away. And then I wouldn't mind getting a Beneath the Sands or Sandworm on the wheel, but Sifterworm's a lot of fun. The correct pick probably would have been Magma Spray in the previous pack, and then Trial of Solidarity in this pack, and then I guess you did pass two Gust Walkers in that case, so you're also passing a lot of the good Exert creatures. But we'll try and make Ramp work. Take the Worm, hope to get some of those cards on the wheel. Alright, this pack's not amazing. Cartouche would be nice for the aggressive decks. Um, I guess there's a Feral Prowler as an okay blocker early on. Can soak up a bit of damage, draw a card. So I don't hate that. The Naga's better in a more aggressive deck. There's a few okay black cards, but... I think we are gonna try and stay green-white for the time being. So there's a few nice ramp cards we could get. There's a 2-mana 1-2 Naga that ramps. There's a 4-mana 2-4 that ramps. So there's a lot of decent ramp cards in the set at common. Cultivator's not one of the better ramp cards. Probably want one of the deserts. Kudu's okay. Better in black-green. Can maybe put the counters on the Cultivator. So do I want the Cycling Desert or the Pump Desert? I think I want the Cycling Desert, even though it's tapped. Like, I don't see this deck as particularly aggressive. So I think just having lands that can cycle late is better. Impeccable timing, fine to have in a more controlling deck. Passing Cartouche of Knowledge. And passing Appeal Authority, which is great in the aggressive green-whites Exert decks. But uh, we're trying to draft something a little bit different. Ooh, Spring to Mind. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Maybe we're gonna end up like blue-green with a bit of white. Or maybe green-white with a bit of blue. But uh, just a spring half isn't too bad. And then if we get some blue mana fixing, we can draw two. Desert of the Mindful would also be okay. These cards are not really what I need. Riverwinder could also be okay once we're potentially blue with a bit of mana fixing. And there's a Vitalist, nice two drop for the deck. A 
we somehow wield the synchronized strike that's surprising don't really want it in our deck even the cartouche of knowledge wields no respect but desert of the truth seems perfect i'll take a rivulet Ooh, nice we wield the beneath the sands so ramp seems open okay maybe play illumination on the splash and a cultivator too not one of the better ramp cards but might end up playing it hmm what do i think of anointed procession in this deck this is at its best in blue white where you've got a bunch of embalm do have an angel of sanctions so far that's about it there's not a whole lot else in this pack for us like desert of the indomitable might be the best there's maybe priest and sacred cat we can hope to wheel i think i'll take the procession and then try and pick up a few more embalm creatures Perilous Vault can be a powerful sweeper. It's a bit slow, but it will do the job. And what else do I want here? Desert is probably the best for us. Not really a riddle form deck. Not enough artifacts to prioritize Manglehorn. So yeah, let's take a Perilous Vault. Trial of Strength. Not at its best in our deck, since we're not playing too many of the cartouches. I would definitely play the green cartouche, that's the one that fights. But we're not aggressive enough to want a lot of the other cartouches. So i probably just take Evolving Wilds for fixing. Could also Rare Draft, since I don't have any Dread Wanderers yet. But I guess I wouldn't mind a bit of mana fixing here. Can I hope to wheel Feral Prowler. Another trial goes by. Might take it now. It's either that or Shafat Dunes, but this isn't amazing in my deck. Besides just being a desert in case I pick up some desert synergies. Monuments only ramps creatures. And is better in a beatdown deck. Let's take the trial. Even if it's just making a 4-2, I guess it's fine. And if we do pick up the green cartouche, it gets a lot better. Beneath the Sands versus Spring to Minds, kind of a close pick. I think I'm leaning Spring to Minds. Ooh, wow, what a pack. Why does Hoopoo have to be in the same pack as Sandworm Convergence? I think it has to be the Convergence. We've got quite a bit of ramp now with Beneath the Sands, Double Spring to Minds, Vitalist, Hope Tender. But uh, it hurts that I have to pass up on the Hoopoo. So yeah, we're definitely the only person trying to draft a ramp deck at the table. As we get another Spring to mind. Could also take the Labyrinth Guardian, actually. I'm already planning to play a bit of blue for Mines from uh, Spring to Mines, if I can find it here. And we also have the Anointed Procession which wants us to play Embalm Creatures. And I'll probably get enough ramp the way it's currently looking. And this is a pretty good early blocker. Take another Desert. Don't have any Desert payoffs yet, but there's a couple we could get. The three mana uncommon enchantments that can gain three if we control a Desert. We wield Sacred Cats. I guess a 2 mana 1-3 there could have also been reasonable. Another trial. If we get any Cartouches, those will be pretty strong. And wield Beneath the Sands. Renewed Faith also fine here, but... I don't mind a bit of ramp. Solemnity, what does that do for me? Don't think it does much. There's another trial, probably just want to vitalists. lists. 
we have some nice payoffs here for ramping with a worm and a convergence angel of sanctions got a few options here resilient kendra is definitely quite strong it also eternalizes so synergizes with the anointed procession there's also edifice which is great in a more controlling deck kind of like a cheaper icy manipulator and then Fanbear is also decent, does something pretty similar to the Edifice. Probably preferred Edifice in this deck. Yeah, if we were a bit more aggressive, then the Kenra would be a higher priority. But I'll take Edifice, Hope to Wheel, Evolving Wilds. Maybe another Desert. Ooh, Cartouche of Strength. We have two Trials of Strength, so that's looking pretty good. There's also Thirst, which is a great removal spell and we've got plenty of deserts to go with it and then even a wall of forgotten pharaohs which would be great here so there's a lot of good stuff for us think i'm leaning uh, cartouche although there's a chance i don't even play the two trials yeah let's take cartouche there's a chance we wheel something out of that pack a lot of goodies and there's my oasis ritualist at long last can exert to add two mana Although it's in the same pack as another Thirst. Man. How much removal do I have? Impeccable timing. Cartouche. Angel of Sanctions. And then we can kind of lock up the game with Convergence. I think it's still the Ritualists. And then we might wield the Impeccable timing here. Demonic Pact. Probably not going to try that one. Although I guess I'm probably not playing two Illuminations. So I might as well get uh, the 20 gems here, or 40 gems. Don't hate Vizier. This can effectively ramp by untapping a land. Hollow One... I guess it's okay if we can cycle a couple cards, but doesn't seem amazing. Ooh, nice. Hoopoo. And it's a pretty late Gustwalker, but don't want it in our deck. Could take a Winds of Rebuke as a bit of cheap interaction. Can okay, maybe mill like a spring to mind and still flash it back. Yeah, sure. Another trial to go with my cartouche. The Avon of Enduring Hope would also be okay. A bit of life gain and a flyer. We're pretty weak in the air. I guess we've got an Angel of Sanctions and a Hoopoo. Evolving Wilds wield. And the Thirst wield, perfect. Nothing that I want. Alright, so I think we ended up with a pretty nice band ramp deck here. Got some decent fixing. Even a sweeper with Perilous Vaults. And some nice ramp payoffs with our Sandworm Convergence, the Hoopoo with the activated ability, Sifter Worm, so let's try and uh, cut this down to 40 cards. I don't think I need Cultivator. What's our count on Embalm for my uh, Procession? I guess the Trials also make tokens, so I don't hate Procession when we have three Trial of Strength as well as Sacred Cats, Labyrinth Guardian, and uh, Angel of Sanctions. And I guess if we can live the dream of Procession plus Sandworm Conversions, that's going to be pretty sweet. All right, so I'm down to play Procession. What else do I cut? Maybe the Winds. Maybe the Feral Prowler. It's definitely not a necessity. I still need to figure out my mana situation, but it's probably going to be primarily green and then equal amounts of blue and white. But we do have a lot of mana fixing to make sure we can still cast our spells here. Yeah, everything else seems decent. 
can maybe shave one of the three mana ramp cards like Beneath the Sands or Spring to Mind. Or maybe a Vizier. Which is maybe a bit more awkward to cast. So let's say I cut both of those. Sacred Cat isn't great. It's mostly just a chum blocker that then synergizes with Anointed Procession. But I guess it might not be necessary. Because yeah, getting white early on might be a bit tricky. So let's cut the uh, Sacred Cat and then maybe Vizier. And then I'm blue-green splashing white for impeccable timing. Procession. Angel of Sanctions is double white, but I think it's worth it. And then I have two Evolving Wilds. Double Beneath the Sands, double Spring. Ritualist, so we do have a lot of mana fixing. And if I have a white list and one white source in play, I have double white for Angel. So it seems fine. All right, and then uh, let's figure out a mana base. How many of these deserts do I need? I don't really have any desert payoff cards, and I don't think Rivulet has any particular... I guess never mind, I do have the Unquenchable Thirst. So that is one desert payoff. But yeah, I don't need to play all the deserts necessarily, although they're just good cards to have if we're flooding out. Although I do have double mines as another mana sink as well. But again, we don't have much going on on turn 1, so playing a tap desert on turn 1 is fine. I have two Desert of the True, one Desert of the Indomitable, two Evolving Wilds, five tap lands. Maybe cut one Desert of the True. Because cycling this one might be a little tricky since it's or a splash color. And then how many planes? At least two. Yes, two enough. Would give me three, four, five. White sources in the mana base, plus double spring, double beneath the sands. Yeah, that's probably enough. Ritualist. And then how many blue sources? Ideally, I would have like seven or eight. Currently, I have four, five, six, seven in the mana base alone. Sure, that's enough. And then green, five, six, seven, eight. A little low on green. I think I would want one more. So yeah, we'll add a forest, and that's good enough. Alright, this looks good. Pretty fun looking ramp deck. And then three copies of Trial with only one cartouche, sadly, but... We also have the Anointed Procession, which could be pretty spicy here. And no lack of card draw between Illumination, the Mind Half of Spring to Mind, and the uh, Hoopoo, the early bird. Catches the worms. All right. Sure. Do need to draw third lands. Can always cycle beneath the sands. I've got a bit of early removal. And then uh, no lack of ramp. Probably want to cast Spring first. Because I might. Maybe I'll cycle the Beneath the Sands now, because we have Ritualist and Spring for Ramp. So I'm kind of just looking for a payoff. Well, that's a payoff. So if I trial now, I could Cartouche next turn and pick up Trial again. So, slight change of plans. And what do I kill? The Steward or the Gustwalker? They're both kind of annoying. But the Gustwalker we can more easily impeccable timing. And then do I want to get second blue or second white? Not sure yet. Second blue helps with uh, mind half. Double white helps if we draw the Angel of Sanctions.
Probably get to white for now. And then uh, I can still get an island with spring if needed. So I can play guardian, play trial, just get a board presence going. Or I can keep up impeccable timing. Yeah, I guess we'll do that instead. Kill the Ghostwalker, maybe. Can sacrifice my creature to gain two if needed. So I respond to this in case they have a plus one pump spell. Also, I can't think of too many. Hoopoo, nice. All right, so now it's time to turn a corner. A leverage or powerful late game. And what's the best way to start? I guess I can go spring plus play hoopoo. Get an island. And we're just gonna chill. Opponent already cycled the desert, so they might be flooding pretty hard. Ooh, insult plus injury. Can deal four damage this turn. And their creatures also deal double damage. So I could trade here for the 1-1 one, one token, or I can take four. Probably just take four. And then hit for four. Can also still gain two here from the compulsory rest. Get some board presence with Guardian and Ritualists, and then next turn I can refuel with Mines. Flying creature is annoying. Hoo-hoo, hello. Sand looks fine. Fetch up a planes right away. I think I just keep ramping with spring here. Get another white source. More likely to just draw a forest naturally. Next turn can play mind, which is an instant, so we can do it end of turn. Opponent on Esper. Hoo-hoo, anointed procession. Alright, so I think the plan is end of turn mind, and then next turn I can go procession plus trial in the same turn. They might also be keeping up a counter spell. Alright. So I guess that's gonna delay our plan a little bit. Do I prefer Historic to Standard? Uh, at the moment I would say yes. But it fluctuates.
All right, we didn't actually find the land, sadly. And because I now only got single green by getting planes earlier, I'm kind of limited in what I can do. Which is unfortunate. I mean, I could just play procession and then I've got double trial strength, which is pretty strong. Or I can play the Perilous Vault first, but I'm not necessarily planning on activating it anytime soon. Basically, whenever a format gets new cards, I'm more interested since there's more exploration for deck building. Which is what I enjoy the most. Once a format is kind of solved, I lose interest. Well, let's see who can make more tokens. Could always blow up the board with Perilous Vault if it gets out of hand. Yeah, I did kind of get punished pretty badly for not getting double green earlier. That's fine. Alright, so I can thirst uh, serpents, although I guess I don't have a desert in play, so it's not going to get tapped right away. So maybe change of plan. Just play some Vitalists. Yeah, I could play another Trial still, just to put some additional power and toughness on the board. And then if I draw a Desert, I can tap down the Serpents. Could also, I guess, use Impeccable Timing to finish off Serpents. I guess we'll go Vitalist plus Trial and just pass a turn. And then Vitalist opens up 7 mana for Worm. I keep an extra Vitalist in hand in case they cast Oblivion so I can discard it. Alright, so one Vitalist goes and then it's between Perilous Vault and Timing. I feel like Perilous Vault's probably not needed since I'm pretty far ahead on board. But those could be my famous last words. And Sifter Worm also gets to dig for more action. So I think I get rid of Vaults, but I might regret it. Ooh, there's a Desert. So if I play the Desert, I can tap down Serpents. Let's see. Oh, never mind, I can even cycle it and then still have it be tapped. So let's do that. And there's a hoopoo, perfect. Get in with the worms. Or the beasts. They kind of look like worms from this angle. Maybe have an impeccable timing for one of them. Another consign? Okay. Hmm. Well, I guess they'll make me discard the Sifter Worm here, but... Getting to play Hoopoo is probably worth it. They can embalm the cat, make two tokens. Ooh, priest. Uh, it's kind of annoying since priest plus cat can gain a lot of life. Opponent's about to gain a ton of life here, but I think it's still worth it to attack. 
and hope the hoopoo can draw us out of it. Back up to 13. Another trial, it's not bad. So I can draw with Hoopoo, still play trial. Although I might want to play trial first in case they have a countervailing winds. Doesn't seem like it. Might also not want to attack with Hoopoo in case of an impeccable timing. The one damage is probably not worth it. So let's just send in the 4 twos. Haha, <laughs> they did a farm. They definitely would have killed the Hoopoo if I attacked with it. And then we'll draw end of turn, play around the discard effect. No Hoopoo. And a Trial of Ambition. Goodbye, Vitalists. Alright, opponent is down to 1-3, and then markets can draw to discard 2, which is not too useful right now. So this is definitely a more interesting game than a game where someone just curves out with a bunch of exert creatures. And then Rivulets don't want to mill the opponent because they might find more embalmed creatures. Uh, milling myself also, I guess, doesn't do a whole lot. I guess I have the one powerful embalmed creature I could hit, but I also don't want to mill my Sandworm Convergence, for instance, because this game might go the distance where we draw all the cards in our deck. Slitherblade, not too powerful here. Alright, so we're looking good. Cycle the desert, that's why the deserts are great. Cycle beneath the sands, that's why cycling is great. Alright, send everyone. They can trade for 1-4-2. We'll kill the 1-3. All right, let's see what they can draw out of it. Another Slither Blade. So they're on double chum block mode. So what do we have left? Sandworm Convergence, Cartouche, Angel of Sanctions. So some pretty powerful cards. Probably doesn't matter if I cast this this turn. Eleven cards. Don't think there's any way of that I'm decking here. All right, GG's. That was a fun game. I've got a Keeper here. Probably fetch up Planes, play turn to Guardian and play Hoopoo later. Can go Guardian into Trial. And by the time we play Hoopoo, hopefully they don't have any removal left.
Luckily, Guardian only dies when targeted by spells and not abilities. Gets bigger if they cycle. Eh, let's get in there. And then play Spring, keep Beneath in hand to maybe cycle later. And then the question is, do I get Forests or do I get Planes? Last time I got punished for not getting double green earlier. The only double white card in the deck is Angel of Sanctions. And I do still have Beneath the Sands, so I think I'll get a Forest. And play Desert. Next turn I can maybe cast Mind, so wait to play Hoop until we can play and activate. Alright, so blue-white and bomb deck. Vizier can be quite strong. Puts Guardian in the graveyard. Ooh, Sifterworm. That's not too shabby. I guess now I'm not hitting Hoopoo plus play Beneath instead of drawing two. And then a Sifter Worm is looking for Sandworm Convergence. That's a strong one. 4-4 four, four Flyer. And a land on top, sadly. Alright, so we'll need some help. Keep Desert in hand to cycle. Next turn I can play Mind and cycle Desert. Am I going to blow up the board with Perilous Vaults? Maybe. Although then I'll lose the Hoopoo. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to block plus impeccable timing. It seems bad. Cycles Attendance. Yeah, I mean, maybe it is right to just blow up the board here. Although maybe I should wait for them to commit some more stuff. So how about this turn I play Spring? I can activate Hoopoo. Maybe even Shumblock with a Hoopoo, although that maybe gives it away. And then next turn, cast and activate Perilous Vault right away. I guess they're probably going to tap down the Hoopoo with a Fan Bear anyway. We'll see. Can also gain two with this ability. Although activating Hoopoo is just better at that point, unless we need to impeccable timing plus compulsory rest activate. Because I'm gonna take quite a beating here. Yeah, I think Parallel's Vault is looking good.
and I have the mana to play and activate. Poor Hoopoo. At least it's in my graveyard instead of exile. Is there any reason to activate it now instead of waiting? I mean, they're just gonna move to combat, so might as well. Ooh, 5-5 five, five Hexproof. It's not the easiest to deal with. Probably should have tapped the desert there. Uh oh. Well, that's probably game over. Although I guess they have an empty graveyard, we did exile everything. But yeah, Godfather's Gift is an absolute bomb. That can get rid of it. Could have tapped a little bit better to keep the vile list untapped. But once I cast mind, it was too late. I mean, I could double block and then just embalm the angel. Make sure it keeps my white mana untapped. Stab this one. I guess I might as well attack. Nice way to refuel. If they find an answer for my 3-4 here, we're in serious trouble. So that's good. Procession would have been sweet with uh, Angel Sanction still in the graveyard. But now I'm just dead to the flyers. Can reveal it do anything for me? Don't think I have any other embalm creatures in the deck I can hit. Yeah, the convergence is what we needed.
Maybe they end up decking. I guess I should uh, try to mill them, maybe. GG's. Yeah, I wonder how this would have played out if I was able to double block the 5-5 five, five hexproof. Probably still lose in the end to all these flyers. Alright, I'll try it. Fetch up forests. Turn 3 we can beneath the sands, get an island. And now we've got plenty of ramp to get towards Sandworm. Drawing islands, nice. And Hoopoo, besides being a powerhouse in the late game, is also just a good early blocker. Opponent on Abzan. They might have some answers for enchantments. We'll see. I guess I get planes. We've got double blue, double green. And then maybe I can cycle the deserts. And that's going to be a turn 5's convergence, potentially. It's a nice combo, put the counters on the cultivator. Didn't necessarily plan on jumping with a hoopoo, but the one damage probably doesn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things. Uh oh. I guess I can chum block now with a hoopoo, because the plan is just to play convergence next turn. Five, six, seven, eight. And hopefully no disenchants. I guess by chomping with a hoopoe I don't force them to necessarily flash back the dust half, but... I think I'm even okay chomping the soul stinger. Because we just need a game to go along and leverage convergence and prevent taking any unnecessary damage. Now if they have a disenchant here, I do get punished, but... Could keep timing for a flyer, but I guess flyers can't even attack. Yeah, let's just kill the scorpion. Alright, and now just let uh, Convergence do the rest of the work. 
we've uh, put in the effort to try and ramp into it, and now we can just sit back and relax as the convergence takes over. Could even make a case for tapping down the mummy so they can't put a counter on my worm and then exile it. Play Illumination. I'll keep the thirst for something that's difficult to deal with. I mean, I can start getting aggressive here too if I want to. Thirst to monitor. Send in the worms. They can put a counter with mummy on one of them to kill it. If they draw something like the Splendid Agony, then they could get us pretty good with uh, Dust Half, so that's also reason to maybe trade off some creatures. I'm just happy to trade. It's looking good. I guess their own Perilous Vaults would be bad, but they don't have the mana to play and activate it. Alright, sweet. Well, turn 5 Convergence essentially won the game. Didn't have to do much else. Alright, I've got a pretty nice hand. Procession plus Trial. Might be another green-white beatdown deck. Don't really want to trade here, although I guess it wouldn't be the end of the world. Yeah, let's take it. Aerial guide. Oof. Now I definitely regret not trading. Now we're going to be taking five in the air per turn. Well, what's my out here? Impeccable timing and I guess ramping into convergence, although that might be too slow. Don't think I can race if I play procession into trials. Let's see, I'm going to 12, play procession, go to 7. Yeah, it's going to be too slow. It's kind of rough. Yeah. 
Yeah, if I didn't have these powerful 4-drops to ramp into, I definitely would have snap traded. Well, there's impeccable timing. That was one of our outs. Although, could also just play Vitalists. And then next turn I can still go Procession into Trial. We'll see how this plays out. Alright, so the comeback has to start here. Ooh, Angel of Sanctions. What a card. Although I don't think we need to play it right now. Can just go Procession, Trial of Strength, make two tokens, and then keep a Vitalists untapped. Or I can just tap all three without needing to exert. If I exert, I get to keep an extra 1-2 on defense, which does seem relevant at 9 life, when I can tap one down with the fan bear. Can pay for sensor. Alright, let's see if we're dead. Something like appeal to authority here could wreck us. Alright, kills one token. Although we did get a free card here. Take five. And then probably just make two more tokens. And then Angel of Sanctions can deal with any flying creature that shows up. Our procession hasn't been bad this draft. We've been able to get good value from it with our trials. We can maybe even embalm the Angel of Sanctions and make two of them now. Pyramids, nice one. I think we'll probably exile it with Angel. And then next turn, can play Mind to refuel. Do I want to attack? Can maybe afford to get in with one. I would love to draw the River Hoopoo to pad our life total. Sandworm Convergence, of course, pretty high up on our list as well. So if I play this, I need to tap the Vitalist, so we'll probably just do it end of turn. 
Now I probably don't attack because they can tap down a creature with a fan bear. Cycles of Floodwaters. Okay. And a Watchful Naga, that's fine. Alright, so we're holding on here. Let's see if we can find some goodies. Oh, yes. Do I want to shuffle first? Probably. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I'm just gonna pass. If the convergence resolves, it should be game over. Get to make two tokens per turn with procession in play. And then Cartouche can pick up double trial to make eight more tokens or four more tokens. Let's, let's take it easy. Four tokens is plenty. I shall be blocking. Uh, let's say they have the plus two plus two and untap two creatures. This would still trade. This would be a five five. I guess the one two can block. So I have to put two of these in front of it. Don't really want to trade Angel of Sanctions this turn since we want a convergence. So this seems fine. Alright. And our opponent scoops it up. Too much value. Well, that was a close one. I went from being almost dead on turn 3 when I played Aerial Guide to top decking the impeccable timing and then taking over the game from there. Decent hands. Alright, interesting decision turn 1. Probably hold the desert and just play the wilds and then fetch up a plains. If my hope tender gets censored, that's fine by me. That's our end game. Try and play Sandworm Convergence. So now I'm more likely to play the desert and cycle it, but I can play turn four as we play another three drop. Crypt of the Eternals. All right, is their opponent maybe trying to cast Nicol Bolas here? We'll see. I could play Spring, but Spring doesn't necessarily let me double spell the turn after, or does it? I would have to draw an untapped land for that to matter. So I think I still play Trial. Uh, so we'll attack first. Hope Tender only ramps for one if we exert it. So we'll keep up the pressure. If this gets countered with a countervailing winds, that's okay. Reduce, sure. Next turn can still decide to trial again. Or I can play Procession. I guess now that we drew Procession and our opponent's keeping up 3 mana, the trial did get a lot more valuable now that we have Procession. 
So maybe the place to sp play Spring, which if it resolves, great. But if it gets countered, I can live with it. And then we keep Procession plus Trials, kind of a two-card combo. So let's attack first. Could have also decided to exert Hope Thunder and play the Procession here. Would also be reasonable, but I kind of like the 2-2 two -two being able to apply a bit of pressure here. This will get an island if it resolves. And then next turn, if I draw a land, I could go Procession plus Trial. They're looking at my lands, a rubble to tap them down. Sure. So I guess I'll just hit for two. Not gonna exert just to play Trial, or am I? Nah, I wanna play Procession first. This game is probably gonna go pretty long. So I need to get all the value I can get. Plus I could have a sensor. So they did time walk me, but they also time walked themselves, so I guess that's fine when we're dealing two to them. Yeah, play procession, can pay for sensor, take it slow. If our opponent wants to play the value game, I will comply. Now if they're gonna slam down Nicol Bolas, that's a different story. Although Angel can get rid of it. Temporarily at least. If they're gonna keep up mana, I'm just gonna pass an end of turn cast mind instead of playing into a counter spell with trial. Trial also doesn't let me double spell. So just more mana efficient to play mind. Alright. Well, Hoopoo does change the dynamic here. As I wouldn't be able to just sit here and do nothing. Or I can draw my own hoopoo. The plot thickens. How about play trial and then if they attack we can impeccable timing the bird. This doesn't remove abilities, just taps it down. Alright, we get some four twos. Could also play Guardian. I think I'll keep up timing. Opponent on a four color deck, going pretty deep. Uh, no attack with a Hoopoo playing around, impeccable timing or a similar effect. And we'll get a Forest. Start by attacking. So I can play my own Hoopoo. Could tap out for Convergence, but don't really want to do that into a bunch of open mana. Alright, Essence Scatter makes sense. I guess I'll play Angel of Sanctions now. Alright, so the hoopoo is gone. They might have a sweeper here. Although both Anger of the Gods and Sweltering Suns don't deal with the Angel of Sanctions. It's gonna be a final reward which does exile it, so no embalming. But currently not enough mana to activate Hoopoo. Interesting. Well. Cartouche would kind of force the issue. But it could be bad if they have instant speed removal. Like another open fire. This is definitely an interesting turn. I guess I'll start by attacking. If they do tap out, I'll just slam Convergence. If they don't, I'll just play Guardian. A 
Let's see, becomes a target of a spell. So yeah, I don't want to target it with Cartouche. But I guess now I can try Cartouching the Beasts. Which will also return the Trial. So, could have had lethal if they had absolutely nothing. But I think we're in pretty good shape if uh, this happens. And I think I'll hold the Trial just to play around Anger of the Gods, Sweltering Suns. And play Guardian. And we should have more than enough if they have nothing. Lay claim stealing my beasts. But they seem dead on board here. And I would have been able to resolve Sandworm Convergence this turn, which would have been pretty strong too. Alright, so opponents seem to have a pretty late game oriented deck. Late claim on our Convergence would have been pretty back breaking, so I'm happy we kind of played it slow. And we got the 7 wins with a pretty sweet deck, so I'm happy we were able to make a ramp deck work here. Although, it is pretty important that you get some good payoffs, like if our deck didn't have Sandworm Convergence, we probably lose a few of those games, and of course Angel of Sanctions did a lot of work. Used the Perilous Vault once as well, so... Yeah, the way you usually end up in the ramp deck is by opening a pretty expensive bomb. We opened Angel of Sanctions, and then you get some of the good ramp cards, like... Uh, Spring to Mind was pretty decent, you maybe get past the Hoopoo early on and then you kind of end up in the ramp deck. And we also got some pretty good value from the Trials, even though we only had the one Cartouche, just because we had the Procession to go with it. And the Deserts were pretty nice too, preventing Flood. Alright, let's crack some packs. Another Approach. Can maybe build an Approach deck at some point. I actually played in a GP where it was uh, Hour of Devastation Limited and it was a, a draft and I managed to play Approach and then on the following turn I played, I think it was the 2-4 Oracle that lets you mill a couple cards, I cycled a few cards and then the turn after I managed to replay the, the very same Approach just because of all the card draw and mill effects. So it's definitely possible to build a decent approach deck and use this as a good win condition and limit it. But you do need to build around it a little bit if you want to make sure you can cast it in a timely fashion. But the 7 life is enough to stay alive long enough to usually get to the second copy and win the game. But uh, yeah, pretty nice win condition. Anything else in the pack worth talking about? Not really. And Nimble Obstructionist, 3-1 Flash Flying with a pretty nice cycling ability. Can sometimes catch the opponent off guard. Sunset Pyramid, also a nice one. If you can draft a slower deck, Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs is also perfect in the type of deck we just drafted. That's kind of controlling, but then can also double up as a win condition. And uh, Ritualist is also great, so is Compulsory Rest and Deem Worthy also a nice 2 for 1 most of the time. So pretty stacked back overall. Even Mind Sensor, nothing special for Limited, more of a constructed card. And then pack one, pick one, probably between Consigned to Oblivion and Magma Spray. Archfiend of Ifnir, definitely a bomb. Can maybe end up in the blue-black cycling deck where you've got the highest density of cycling cards and cycling payoffs. And it doesn't take much for this to decimate the opponent's board. And this is one-sided, so... That card's great. A Braid's also very good. Final Reward, decent, can potentially shut down any Embalm synergies, or uh, can be used to exile the gods that are indestructible. There's not too many answers for the gods, and this is one of them. But 5 mana can be a bit clunky if you're up against a very aggressive low-curve deck. 
so you don't want too many of the five mana removal. And there's a Naga Oracle that I was talking about a second ago with Approach. Can also be nice in an Embalm deck. A Grind to Dust, also an excellent split card here. And a nice incentive to go black-white, although you can potentially splash the Dust Half. And even Grind by itself is just a Sorcery Speed version of the 3-mana uh, instance, which is already quite good. So even if you are just black and can cast Grind for 2-mana, that's already quite good. And then Desert's Hold, potentially a payoff for Deserts. And Drakehaven, another payoff for the cycling deck. Definitely a nice build around. And you don't need to make too many drakes for this to be worth it. So if your deck has like, let's say, six or seven cycling cards, you can already consider this. If you make two drakes, that's already quite good. And any additional drakes is just uh, pure value. There's a Trial, which is decent. Cartouche, I think I would... Hmm, it's kind of close whether you take Trial first or Cartouche first. I think Cartouche is the better card between the two, but it's definitely close. And if you have one Cartouche, of course, the Trials go up in value, so you kind of have to balance the two. But uh, yeah, most of the Trials, I would say, are better than their Cartouche variants. But in the green case, I think it's pretty close. And then uh, Spider, potential payoff for the Black Green, minus one, minus one counter deck. Although I don't think it's necessarily a huge incentive to move into black green. It's just a fine playable, but I wouldn't necessarily first pick this and then force black green. It's not powerful enough to justify that. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.